Hey everyone, I hope you're doing really well and having a good day. I am in my back garden today and I'm going to be planting up my rock retaining wall with the Erigeron daisies that I have uh, left over and filling up this wall. I'm also going to be planting some more of this Cat's Meow Nepeta further down this border and some uh, thyme and Irish moss and just get um, as many things in this wall as I can today. Uh, we have a summer storm coming through uh, sometime today or tomorrow, but it's cooler today, but uh, humid. And that's uh, for an area that's typically dry in the summer. I definitely feel the humidity and um, it's a lot. So uh, I'm gonna get planting and let's go. So this is the variety of Erigeron that I have here. It's called Profusion and it is only hardy down to zone 7 and I am in zone 6B. You can see the same variety I have planted um, a while ago along the stairs that's filling in. These are definitely ready to get out of their pots. Um, the idea with this variety, and we're just going to see how well it works, is that these will self-seed freely around. And so even though the mother plant won't necessarily be hardy here, um, hopefully the, the hope and the goal is that these will just spread themselves around um, every year and get more and more bountiful and luscious each year. So here is the Cat's Meow Nepeta. Here it is actually an established plant in the border. This plant is one year old. And then this of course is brand new. Um, this variety gets 17 to 20 inches tall. So it's kind of a medium size Nepeta. These are hardy in zones three through eight. And after bloom, which this one still looks pretty good. Um, I cut it all the way back down to all the fresh growth and this will rebloom later in the summer. But you can see here all these new branching um, parts on the stem. These will become fresh uh, flowers if we cut it back. But I'm gonna get these now. So I have two here and there was a third that our dog had dug up the spring but I'm gonna plant three more to continue the rhythm down the pattern and I'm gonna be weeding and cutting things back as I go along. But I also wanted to show you these kind of already had their, um, they looked their best about a day or two ago. I definitely shared these um, in detail on my Instagram, Honey Hill Home, if you follow me there. These are the Tea Clipper Roses, which I planted just a year ago. These were from Heirloom Roses these three plants here. And then this one was bare root directly from David Austin this year, which is further behind and gonna have its first little bloom here soon. This has definitely become one of my top three roses in the garden right now. Uh, it is leggy as you can maybe see from its growth habit. It puts out these long uh, leggy stems. So um, as this rose establishes, I know it's gonna need some support and underplanting it with with uh, nepeta and hardy geranium and things that kind of fill in those gaps where the legginess is and just make it look fuller all around and also help support the rose I think will be the best way to go. It opens this very, I'm gonna start if I can climb up here, hang on. It opens this rich, vibrant, almost pale apricot to orange bloom and then it fades to this beautiful blush and I just love the ruffles and then as it completely washes out and ages you know becomes almost white but you know this one needs to be deadheaded so I'm going to be deadheading these today and um Man, I've just loved seeing this rose bloom. I didn't get to see it bloom last year. So I'll just go over what I'm using here really quick to plant. I've got a bag of compost. This is just um, well-rotted forest material. And then this is, um, I meant to plant this probably two weeks ago. This is the blue waterfall campanula and it's not looking its best anymore. These leaves were this color when I bought it, um, but I'm gonna cut it back after I plant it but in a rock wall and it's just this trailing stunning it, this was 
at its peak was completely smothered in these beautiful bell blooms. And there was only one at the nursery when I picked it up. I'm going to be on keeping my eye out for some more um, to fill on the top parts of the wall. But love this. You know, if you watch my videos, you know how much I love Campanulas. Okay, so my camera overheated and I just went ahead and kept on planting to get things done. We are having thunder and a storm is definitely coming through. Um, but I want to show you everything that I got planted and where. And then I'm gonna So it doesn't look too great, but I planted the com waterfall campanula. I'm going to cut that back um, and refresh it. I planted another Irish moss 
here on the wall. I have six left of the Origeron daisies and I do have a project that I want to save these for if I can get all the other materials. It's kind of a big project um, and get it done. If not, I'm going to be planting it up on the ridge of the rock up here. I'm going to remove the grass basically at the fence line and then um, I'm, I have a bunch of climbers I'm planting along the fence and then I'll do the Origerons um, on the rock parts to spill over and soften the back rock wall if that makes sense. Um, but we'll just see. We'll see if I can get all the other supplies I want for the next project I have. I don't know if you can hear the thunder. Um, but I planted Origeron daisies along the wall. You guys saw me do all of that. And then, oh, I planted one of the cat's meow nepetas here. Another one right here. These things are all very close together, but I want to have seen no soil. <laughs> and then the third one at the end. So you'll see that continuation of the cat's meow nepeta all down the wall. You saw me plant all of these Origeron daisies, which will hopefully perk up and really start to fill in the cracks. And then here's another, um, a white creeping thyme I planted today. And I planted two more white creeping thymes. One here next to this Origeron daisy. And then one here at the base of this cat's meow nepeta. These evening primroses I picked up at uh, the grocery store are so soft and pretty. And I'm really, really, loving them. It was kind of an impulse thing and um, but I'm actually loving them in this border. I love that effect altogether. So I still need to add some wire or twine to the tree so that this Paul Farge clematis can climb up and not spill down but it is starting to bloom. This is very similar to the sweet autumn clematis except that it will bloom all summer long. So for that reason, I actually prefer it to the Sweet Autumn. And then here is the Rambling Rector Rose. I planted two years ago. It's never grown. This is the most it's ever grown. This is the most it's ever bloomed by far. It's planted on the shady side of this tree and I probably should move it to the sunny side, but it is starting to get going this year and once it starts twining around the tree where the sun's hitting all the foliage around the tree I think it's really going to take off and so I might just leave it and give it another year and see what it does but if it hasn't grown much I will move it next spring early next spring to reduce any kind of shock. My generous gardener rose looked gorgeous yesterday it opened up its first bloom but we have some blooms but um we have some fresh ones opening up and this one when it is fresh is so beautiful these all need to be deadheaded um but the blooms only last really just a day um but so so pretty and i love how this irish moss is blooming those beautiful dainty little white blooms just a lot of detail and the cosmos i planted here I pinched back. There are the sweet rocket planted in here that are starting to put on some growth in and amongst and those are biennial. Those will bloom next year. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and refresh this campanula by cutting it back by about a third or so to hopefully get it to flush some new growth and some fresh blooms. So I'm just going to grab it. probably more like half I'm cutting it back by but I want it to uh, put its energy into getting established into the ground and starting to push forth new growth but these blooms are so beautiful and I can't wait to see this really just thick and beautiful blossoms spilling over this wall intermingling with the Origeron and that texture and that um, interplay of plants. You know, this is a very diff different leaf structure and bloom to the Origeron daisies uh, and a very different leaf structure to the geranium, Roseanne. It's all just so, so lovely. 
Okay, so this video was short and sweet, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you a little inspiration to get out into the garden today. Um, it is starting to rain. The storm is rolling through. I will see you next time. Happy gardening. Bye.